This video will be on Russia and Ukraine and the special military operation. There's a lot of media bass in the West. It's heavily in favor of Ukraine. So many commentators have spoken about how the victims are European, blonde haired and blue eyed. Yet they didn't care about similar children in Yugoslavia, South Africa, the Malo-Russian republics of Donetsk and Lugansk for the last eight years. They did not care about blonde-haired and blue-eyed children in Palestine, Lebanon and Syria. And they did not care about European children in Ireland. There's a lot of hypocrisy on this subject. The world recognised East Timor when they were living under an oppressive and genocidal government in Indonesia. Yet the world did not recognise Tamil Elam when the Tamils were living under an oppressive and genocidal government in Sri Lanka. And once again, the world does not recognise the Malo-Russian republics despite the Malo-Russians living under an oppressive and genocidal government in Ukraine. Between November 2013 and February 2014, there was the Maidan coup, supported by the US, NATO and the European Union, to overthrow Viktor Yanukovych and as Yevon Karas admitted it was a Nazi coup. Victoria Newland, on the recorded phone call, selected Yevgeny Yatsenuk as president or as prime minister of Ukraine. Then the Russians took back Crimea. It was only considered Ukrainian between 1954 and 2014. Prior to that, it had been considered Russian. There was the Odessa massacre when the right sector petrol bombed trade union protesters protesting against Maidan and 30 or 46, I beg your pardon, were burned to death. In Donbass, over 15,000 people were killed. That's according to Reuters and Al Arabia. Ukrainian military caused 81% of civilian casualties, according to the UN. Since the late 90s, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro, Albania, Macedonia and Bulgaria have all joined NATO, moving closer to Russia's borders and surrounding it. Now, imagine if Russia tried to blackmail and threaten Mexico and Canada. They did Nazi coups in Ottawa and Mexico City. Imagine if in response Northern Mexico and Southern Canada tried to secede. Imagine if the Russian-backed Nazis did a genocide against those areas trying to secede. Imagine refugees from said genocide flowed into the United States. Imagine if said Nazis had the audacity to shell the United States. How would Americans feel? Now imagine how Russians feel. 17.3% 17 of the Ukrainian population are ethnic Russians. 29.6% of Ukraine's population speak Russian. That is according to the Ukrainian census. Vladimir Zelensky is from Russian speaking Kirby Ray. His grandfather fought for the Red Army against the Nazis. He lost family in the Holocaust. Zelensky called Stepan Bandera a hero. Zelensky signed the Indigenous Peoples Act, a race law that excludes Russians. He imposes curfews, martial law and 
took Russian language channels off TV. He also arrested the opposition leader. The EU sent 450 million euros worth of weapons. US has sent over 3.2 billion dollars worth of weapons since 2014. Biden has sent over 1.65 billion dollars worth of weapons. Germany sent over a thousand anti-tank weapons and 500 stingers because Armin Banderites worked so well for Germany in the past. Between 1922 to 1940 and 1945 to 1991, this kind of war did not happen. The Soviets were stable. People say Russia is fascist due to the Russian Patriotic Union and the National Bol Bolsheviks stroke the other Russia existing, forgetting that these parties came from the regime change agenda against the Soviet Union that liberals supported. Bill Clinton rigged the 1996 presidential election for Boris Yeltsin against Gennady Shiganov. Clinton advised Yeltsin on promoting a certain FSB agent named Vladimir Putin to Prime Minister. Yanukovych was a better Ukrainian president than Poroshenko and Zelensky. Ukraine first hit its territorial peak under Yaroslav the first Kiev and Rush, working with Russia and Belarus. Ukraine hit its territorial peak for a second time under the Soviet Union, working with Russia and Belarus. 80% of Ukrainians voted to retain the Soviet Union. Ukraine was the second most powerful Soviet country and the economic will of France. It is now as weak as Puerto Rico and the poorest country in Europe. The situation in Ukraine now is similar to the Budapest insurrection. The West was not praying for Ukrainians then. Since the military operation began, Putin's approval rating went from 61% to 69% and Zelensky's approval rating went from 29% to 91%. K. Bono There's the issue of Nord Stream 2. 12.2% of Germans' energy is gas. 12.6% is nuclear power. Germany is phasing out nuclear power. So the phasing of Nord Stream 2 means that Germany has to account for a quarter of its energy needs. And it's worth noting Nord Stream 2's approval by German political parties. The left, 94%. Alternative for Deutschland, 84%. Free Democratic Party, 82%. Christian Democratic Union and Christian Social Union, 81%. Social Democrats, 75%. The Green Party, 60%. The German public supports it, 75%. 17% oppose it. The reason Nord Stream 2 is undemocratic. 70% of Ukraine's oil imports are from Russia and Belarus. Germany won't be able to fill the gap given its own energy needs. Russian energy reserves are worth over $844 billion. Russian energy is 60% of GDP. Russian energy exports are over $167 billion. Ukraine's energy reserves need $19.5 billion worth of investment. Ukraine has an estimated 5.4 trillion cubic meters of natural gas, which would make it the 14th largest. It has 1.1 trillion cubic meters of proven natural gas reserves. It has 400 million tons of gas, 850 million tons of oil, 390 5 million barrels of oil. Ukraine exports 
555 million dollars worth of energy exports a year. Ukraine produces 14.4 million tons of oil equivalent in coal, 16.5 million tons of oil equivalent in gas, 2.3 million tons of oil equivalent in crude oil. Ukraine produces 83 terawatt hours of nuclear power, seventh largest in the world. Nuclear power accounts for 50% of Ukrainian electricity, 65% of Ukraine's energy needs are met with domestic production. Crimea's oil and gas fields contain 58.6 billion cubic metres of natural gas, 1,231,000 tonnes of natural gas condensates, 2.53 million tonnes of crude oil. The Black Sea and Azov has 6% of Ukraine's energy reserves and are worth 5% of Ukraine's energy production. The Carpathians contain 13% of energy reserves worth 6% of Ukraine's energy production. Borislav in El Aviv produced 80% of Polish oil when it was part of Poland. If Cuba, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, Panama and Venezuela are in the backyard of the United States, then Ukraine and Malorussia are on Russia's doorstep. The United States defended an unjustifiable embargo on Cuba with the rationale that Cuba is in the United States backyard. The United States opposes Irish unity and independence on the grounds that the United States don't want another Cuba in Europe's backyard. During the Russian military operation, the United States shelled Somalia. Israel shelled Palestine and Syria. Saudi Arabia shelled Yemen. And Wahhabi terrorists did suicide attacks on Shia mosques in Pakistan. And to conclude this video, I will go over the reported casualties. I'll address Russian military casualties first. There were 498 soldiers killed according to Russia. It is, that figure is between 2,000 and 3,000 according to the United States. And the figure was reported by NBC to be 5,800 and they cited the source of two western officials and there were, have been 11,000 Russian soldiers killed according to the Ukrainian foreign ministry the Netsk military casualties um, are at 47 soldiers killed according to Donetsk Ukrainian military casualties are at 110 soldiers killed according to Ukraine and 1,500 according to the United States and the Russians say that 2,870 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed the civilian casualties 406 at least according to the United Nations and over 2000 according to Ukraine.